Hello, guys. Y'all stuff is getting ready to come undone, okay? And y'all have no idea what is getting ready to happen. Please hear me and study for yourself. You can think whatever you want to think about me, but you need to study for yourself. Time, the Most High is He is done, okay? He is done with what has been going on. The 400 year is up. The curse is up. I'm sorry, my kitty just sneezed. The 400 cur year curse is up, okay? God's people, the Most High has chosen the Hebrews, the blacks in America, okay? We're about to see some power. Come on, y'all. You got to get out of this lie. Okay, you've got to get out of this lie. You have got to come out of this lie. This white Jesus that you are worshiping is going to take you to hell. Please wake up. Oh, in the name of Yahusha, wake up. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yahusha is an alpha, strong, black man. He is a Negro. He is a Hebrew. I don't know what word you need to hear to understand who they are. But it is not me. I am not a chosen. You can get mad. It doesn't matter. This is how the Most High has done it. I am a Gentile. And I know my place. But I am called to tell all of these Gentile whites that I know that you are in the deepest deception that you have ever been in. And you have been in it your whole life. And the awakening is happening now. People are waking up. Oh, Lord, I haven't even read, finished the scripture. I haven't even read the scripture. Let me stop. Shalom, shalom from Israel. This is Ola, the daughter of Jethro. And I just heard that you black people that was stolen from Africa to America, that you don't know who you are. But you are the children of, of Yahweh, the children of Israel. And I'm telling you, you have to come back to your homeland, here to Zion, to Jerusalem, because us, the Gentiles, we do need you. We need you to come and pray because you are our saviors. You the one that was chosen by Yahweh to live in this land, not the Jewish people, it's you. You were stolen from Africa, they deceived you, they told you that you are slaves, but you actually the children of Israel. And it's time just to come, come back, come for, for, for your people, come back for us, come back for the whole Gentiles, because only you, only you gonna save us. So please come back to Zion. You see, the Most High, he is coming back to deliver his children, the children of Israel, the Israelites that's been scattered abroad through the four corners of the earth. He's coming back to deliver us. And so the Gentiles are waking up slowly, realizing they have to get back in their, in their God-given position that was given to them, back in order. And the correct order is in servitude to the Israelites. You see, this is all prophesied that it would happen and this Gentile understands her role. She understands her place. She understands that in order to come with the children of Israel, she has to come as a servant, as a handmaid in servitude. The same way that we've been over here for 400 plus, almost 500 years in servitude as handmaids, as slaves in captivity, it's the same way these heathens is gonna have to come with us back to our holy land. And they're going to have to build our land up. The same way we built America, they're going to have to come and build our land up. So we have to get in a mind state that a lot of our people still look at the heathen as somebody that's over them. When that's all been set up and based off white supremacy, we have to renew our minds. They are not over us. This is Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 16 through 17. It say, And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them, neither shall thou serve their gods, for this shall be a snare unto thee. If thou shalt say in thine heart, these nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? So the Most High, he asking us, like, if you think these nations and these heathens, the Gentiles, are more than you, the children of Israel, how can the Most High do away with these people? We have to return back to the most high renew our minds and, and build our spirits back up and understand who you are and where you come from understand that the very blood that flows through your veins is royalty the very blood that flowed through your hawashai which the world ignorantly calls jesus christ is the same blood that flows through your very veins 
Almighty, the Most High, said in Deuteronomy 7 and 6, Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen you to be a special people unto himself, above all people upon the face of the earth. Understand who you are. Understand that the Most High has already pre-selected and predestined you to be his special people, his chosen people, his children. Okay? You have to understand that the Most High, he is not a, a God of confusion. The Most High, he is set up all with order. And the, and the orderly thing is obviously the children of Israel is going to be back in rulership. That's Second Ezra 6 and 9. You know, for the end, I'm paraphrasing it, but the end of Esau is the beginning of Jacob. You see, these nations, these heathens, so-called Europeans, they had their run. They had their stretch. Their rulership is coming to an end very fast. And guess what? Jacob's up next. That's the children of Israel getting ready to get into rulership. So everything got to be done decently and in order. We have to always remember and understand that the Most High, He is a just God and He deals with His children accordingly. He loves His children, the children of Israel, okay? He loves us very much. And, you know, He's a just God. So He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. You see, you can't, you can't rape, rob, murder, annihilate a whole nation of people, right? And think that you just go sky free. Now you can get the salvation. Now you can get everything that's been ordained to give to the people that you did that to. And you receive the same thing. The most high, he don't work like that. He is a just God. This is Isaiah 14, 1 through 2. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. And will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. So that's been prophesied that is what's happening. The Gentiles are waking up, blowing a whistle, and they're literally cleaving to the house of Jacob right now. So we have to repent and return back to the Most High and keep his law, statutes, and commandments. This is Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe, y'all. Our salvation is right around the corner. Wake up wake up out the matrix understand remember who you are man the most high he's getting ready to come back and deliver us from the hand of our enemies and all those that hate us shalom welcome back to the channel i just hope that you're doing fine today these are presented in stories and hi whatever you are now the prophecy that the gentiles will cleave the house of jacob that's according to isaiah chapter 14 verse 1 to 2 um these can be metaphorically seen um as connected to the racial dynamics between black and white people in america in the context black people could be seen representing lineage tied to struggle oppression and in search for redemption while white people as gentiles are those who may eventually acknowledge the historical wrongs and cleave or seek unity with their black counterparts and I know this is not for the first time you're seeing such kind of events. We have white people who consider themselves as Gentiles who agree and see to it that it is true and everything that they did to uh, black people is wrong. And, um, you know, the spiritual connection and the unity of, 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 I mean, the unity of redemption by accepting the atrocities that um, their ancestors did to black people can be seen i mean a person coming out and saying they are sorry the spiritual nakedness that they are having towards um sharing this information however i know that not all black people have accepted these apologies not all black people have accepted um these acknowledgements because we have people who are still um who are still in pain and they can't just forgive easily. Just like a video that I did yesterday about that gentle brother who was asking for forgiveness from a black person who was doing um, who was doing a public apology in towards this. Now, many African-American spiritual and religious traditions 
see their struggle as linked to the biblical narratives of the Israelites in Egypt, which reflects a broader call for liberation and justice. White Americans, Gentiles could be viewed as needing to cleave to the truth of these historical struggles and join in fight for the racial justice, acknowledge and repenting from the sins of slavery, segregation, and systematic racism. This will symbolize the unification of both groups under a shared moral and spiritual purposes. We are seeing a big um, unity. Um, in the past, remember the white churches, the white evangelicals, they couldn't allow black people to just have the same pace of place with them. But today we are seeing that happening. This shows you that um, there is a connection. People are really coming and getting the truth. I don't want to say much. I want us to watch this video and then definitely it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, so black church and white and white evangelicals throughout the history the black church in America has been the source of strength and resilience advocating for civil rights and equality. White evangelicals Christians, on the other hand, have traditionally held significant influence in American society and politics. The prophecy might be interpreted as a call for the two groups to come together, for white Christians to acknowledge their complicity in systemic racism and work towards reconciliation with black communities. Um, there is a reconciliation that when you see these people coming out trying to say out their story for what they did in the past, this shows the type of reconciliation that they are having towards um, black people. And some go to an extent of recognizing that black people are the chosen ones. They are the chosen ones, you know. So um, in the racial context, the concept of white people cleaving to black people can be interpreted as a movement towards racial reconciliation. This involves white Americans confronting the legacy of racial inequality and joining black people in the fight for justice and equity. It is a metaphor for unity after centuries of division, with white people recognizing the value, history, and contribution of black people. Much like Gentiles recognizing the spiritual heritage of the house of Jacob, Acknowledging historical wrongs as my talking point. Uh, for true healing to happen between black and white communities in America, there needs to be understanding and acknowledgement of historical wrongs, much like the Gentiles turning to the house of Jacob for guidance and truth. In this analogy, white people must acknowledge their role in systemic racism and seek rectify those injustices by standing in solidarity with black people. Um, What's the significance of this? We will talk about the cultural appropriation versus cultural cleaving. There is also a cultural aspect to this. When white people adopt elements of black culture without acknowledging the historical significance, it is often labeled as cultural appropriation. However, if it's done with respect, humility, and acknowledgement from the black contribution, it can be seen as a form of cleaving to the house of Jacob joining in and supporting the preservation and elevation of black culture. Shared struggles and movement. The civil rights movements uh, and more recently movements like Black Lives Matters have often sought solidarity from all racial groups urging white people to join the fight for equality and justice. In this way, white people cleaving to black people involves supporting those struggles, recognizing common humanity, and working towards societal transformation. So um, I opt you to get uh, the other side of the story, and that was part of my presentation um, in regards to, in regards to this, you know. So, um, Religious diversity and unity. America is a nation of diverse races, ethnicity, and religious beliefs. The idea of Gentiles cleaving to the house of Jacob can be seen as call for unity among different people under the worship of one God. In Christian circles, many believe this prophecy is fulfilled in the form of Christianity, where both Jews and Gentiles are unified, are united in the faith in Christ. This echoes the themes of racial reconcil uh, reconciliation and spiritual unity. 
that are relevant in America, racially and religiously diverse societies. Messianic movements. I'll talk about Messianic movements. In modern America, there are a growing Messianic Jewish community where Jewish believers, believers in Jesus, Yeshua, and non-Jews, that's Gentiles, worship together. These directly reflect the prophecy of Gentiles cleaving to the house of Jacob as non-Jewish Christians embrace aspects of Jewish worship and tradition recognizing the Jewish roots of Christianity. So um, tell me what you think about this video. That was my representation and my interpretation towards what I'm seeing uh, more of white people now living their behavior, living their racist ways, living their racist culture, and coming back to uh, understanding the atrocities that they did to black people. I don't know probably what's really happening, but I believe this is the right time to have a great discussion, have a talk towards this, because um, it is important for us to always discuss more and more of these uh, things because they affect us. And the question of forgiveness, um, it's majorly upon, you know, um, black people, if they can decide to uh, forgive them for what their ancestors did. And it's also important for us to understand history. It's also important for us to understand that things are really changing according to the prophecies. And now people are leaving the wrongs that they were doing and coming back to do what is rightful for them to do. These are presented in Duke stories. And if you're watching this video for the first time, I'll ask you to subscribe to the channel, join my membership and really get to see what I can offer you. Until then, peace, love and harmony. Salute.